Hello everyone, my name is Martin Lavelle and I'm going to be talking to you today about our mathematics degrees and the careers that they can lead to. And before I do that, let me just introduce myself a little. So I am the Associate Head of our school for Outreach and Admissions and I have the pleasure of teaching calculus to all of our students in the first year. And then I teach vector calculus, that's new techniques developed for problems in higher dimensions in the second year. And as well as that, I am by trade a theoretical physicist. I carry out research in particle physics, studying problems to do with quarks and electrons. So let me now share with you my slides. If you'd like to contact me, here is my email address. And let's start by considering the various branches of mathematics. I thought this might be a useful way of starting the talk. So applied mathematics is what I actually predominantly teach. Calculus is the language of applied mathematics. Whether you are studying how fluids, and to a scientist a fluid can be a liquid or a gas because they both flow. So whether you're studying how a fluid flows, or if you're trying to understand in finance how the stock market might go up or down, or at the moment you might be looking at how diseases spread as, as part of epidemiology. Again, you can be using calculus to study these things. So calculus is the core language of applied mathematics. Pure mathematics is all about the underlying structures and symmetries of mathematics. It goes really down deep into what mathematics means. And you might think that that sounds beautiful, but perhaps not very useful in the so-called real world, but it's incredibly useful. So just like applied mathematics, pure mathematics turns out to really help us in so many applications. And an example of that would be when you go online to buy something, the encryption system that you are relying on is based upon pure mathematics number theory that we teach in the first year and the first semester indeed of our maths degrees. Probability is another beautiful area of mathematics and it leads into statistics. And statistics at university level is very different to school and college. For a start, you'll be using calculus, you'll be integrating probability densities. And also, you won't be using a calculator, you will be solving large scale problems with computers. So, for example, if you're running a big medical trial, you will be recording and analyzing everything with computers. And the programming language that we teach our students to solve such problems is called R, and it's been developed collaboratively by computer scientists and statisticians across the world. Another area of mathematics that you may not be very familiar with is operational research. And you can describe operational research as the mathematics of decision making. And this is used for logistics, for planning, for simulations, for optimization. So, for example, we have got graduates who've gone to work at the National Air Traffic Control Center, and they would be using operational research tools which they got taught on the second year of the mathematics degree. Theoretical physics is my own area and you can learn topics such as quantum theory and relativity on the degree. And to illustrate this, I've taken a photograph of my mobile phone with a mapping application open. And a mobile phone, like all computers, is a quantum device. But the mapping applications connect to the GPS system and GPS relies upon relativity, not just Einstein's special theory of relativity, but also his theory of gravity, the general theory of relativity. And if you were not using relativistic effects, your location on a map would be wrong by kilometers. It really would not be a useful thing without relativity. So again, we see all of these branches of mathematics as well as containing beautiful and surprising ideas are really useful. Now, nowadays, mathematicians make great use of computer programming and computers to solve problems with 
mathematics. So for example, we teach our students starting in the first semester Python and we start from scratch. And one of the problems that they get to solve is the encryption problem mentioned earlier under pure mathematics. So the students solve that and set up encoded messages. As well as that, students meet R in statistics. And in the second year, we teach students how to program with Excel, which is very much a desired tool for many companies. Students who choose to can also go into understanding supercomputing, solving problems with a high performance cluster. And as well as that, we have a GPU teaching center and a GPU research center, and students can look at that. Additionally, we put a great deal of effort in Plymouth into helping our students develop communication skills. So if, for example, you're at a placement, GSK, a big pharmaceutical company, then they're going to be asking you to write reports and to give oral presentations. And this is going to be useful in any job, really. So we want you to, to develop your communication skills and we will help you to do that. So such professional experience, having something like a placement, I think it's really important. But I also want to make it completely clear that mathematics itself is very important. So here is a quote from one of our graduates. All of the people that I'm talking about on these slides are graduates of ours. So Becca Rowain, who's now an analytics manager in The Guardian News and Media. And during her degree, she had an internship at Condé Nast. And after she had completed that role, they paid her a great compliment by changing the job description to ask future candidates to have a mathematics type of degree with a good understanding of Excel. And this is because they had started to understand how useful mathematics graduates can be in the modern data-driven economy. So what are you going to learn on the degree? Well, the first year is partly what you expect. You're going to be studying calculus, vectors, matrices, complex numbers. But there are lots of surprises. I've already mentioned number theory and cryptography. The ethos is also really based upon proof and rigor. So we want you to understand where results come from. And when you approach the final year, having developed a really good understanding of important tools in all of the areas of mathematics, you can choose to specialize and say, I want to work on applied mathematics, or I want to work on pure mathematics, or I'd like to go into medical statistics, for example. And you will be taught there by research experts, people who carry out research in these topics. So I just mentioned medical statistics, and the lecturer who teaches that module works with the World Health Organization. Assessment throughout the degree is generally dominated by exams. And in the first year, it's typically 60% examination, 40% coursework. And by the time you get to the final year, it's typically 80% examination and 20% coursework. But there are, of course, some coursework only modules. And an example of that would be the final year project option. And that's a chance for you to work under the supervision of one of your lecturers who is carrying out research in that field on a problem that interests you. So Duane, for example, here, he works for IBM, the company that invented the PC, and he carried out a final year project on quantum computing. And in common with many people who've carried out individual projects, when he went to a job interview, he was able to talk about his project and show that he was doing very, very high level material. Now, to study such high level material, you need support. And we're very proud of the level of support we give our students in Plymouth. So that includes tutorials, it includes peer assisted learning, where for example, a second year student can be helping first year students with a problem that the students are struggling with a little bit. And we also have a personal tutor system where you will be meeting a lecturer on a regular basis. And there's a drop-in center in the library. 
And at the moment, that drop-in centre is functioning online. So we have made you know, a big transition in the last few weeks, but it seems to be going very well. We have approachable lecturers and we have an open door policy. Lecturers like students to ask them questions. And importantly, on our degrees here in Plymouth, you get a lot of contact. So we have 18 hours of classes per week, and that's lectures, tutorials, computer labs, depends slightly on what the module is. And we're expecting that you carry out at least the same amount of private study outside. So it's a commitment to study mathematics, but it's a very exciting and very rewarding commitment. Additionally, we've started several years ago now to use technology to help teaching and learning. And that can be something very simple, such as giving you electronic copies of lecture notes as well as printed copies. But also we use podcasts, um, which are written by staff and sometimes by students to explain things. And we can use voting systems in class to give people instant feedback so that we can understand what is being understood. And all of this adds up to a track record of extremely satisfied students. So if you look in the 2020 Guardian University Mathematics League table, Plymouth is fourth in the UK. And this is not a one-off. If you look at the 2019 table, we were top of the UK for satisfaction with the course and fourth in the UK for satisfaction with mathematics teaching. And if you go further back, you will keep finding year on year that students, through their votes in the National Student Survey, show that they are very happy with the decision they made to study mathematics at the University of Plymouth. As part of your degree, I would very much recommend that you get professional experience. A year-long placement, which is carried out between the second year and the final year, is something which you should expect to be paid for doing. And recent employers include MasterCard in finance, GlaxoSmithKline and Eli Lilly in the um, pharmaceutical sector, the Office for National Statistics and the Defence Science and Technology Lab at government level, and many other companies. And we find that students, when they return from such a placement, on average, their marks go up. So they are very successful, both professionally and also academically. We very much recommend this experience. However, there are alternatives. So instead of a year long placement, students can take a summer placement and that could be in um, a local company or a company further away. We've had mathematics students carrying out placements using their knowledge of data in things such as social housing and the local National Marine Aquarium. So that's something, again, we'd very much recommend. We also have a school placement module in the final year for students who are interested in going into teaching. And then those students go into a local school one day a week during their final year. To support students in obtaining such placements and obtaining um, interesting jobs afterwards, we run various careers events and talks, and we also take students to other events. So for example, we take students every year to the Operational Research Society Careers Fair. So what I'd like to do now is just to go through a few areas where students typically go into, and one of them is medical research. So we are lucky nowadays that we obtain evidence-based medicine and evidence-based medicine requires statistics. So all of the medical trials that are trying to develop vaccines for COVID-19, they are all going to involve statisticians. So here are three of our former students who now work in the medical field. So Jenny Lannan is a statistician for the NHS Blood and Transplant Service. Sean Bedford works on large scale international medical trials. And Milenzu Shanyinde went from us to Oxford to work for their clinical trials unit. And they are now putting her through a PhD at UCL in the epidemiology of HIV. 
So again, you can see that medicine requires people with an interest in statistics. In the financial world, there are many jobs for mathematicians. And Dom, Dom Clay here is a portfolio manager for a large American company based in the city of London. And what he says here is that the most useful thing you get from a mathematics degree is the ability to solve problems. So solving problems, thinking logically, thinking rationally, a mathematics degree is a wonderful preparation for this. Charlotte Wells here went into a different financial sector. She's become a chartered accountant and we're very proud of her because she won the International Order of Merit for Financial Accounting, taking an exam and beating everybody else who took it that year. There are lots of jobs for mathematicians in industry and engineering. So Thomas Sirovsky, after his degree, he decided to take a PhD in marine engineering. And the problem he was looking at was mathematical modeling of how to detect undersea cables with a defect. And this is a difficult job. And he designed a brand new approach using things called Monte Carlo methods, which he learned on the second year of his degree. And that was a technique that nobody was previously using. And afterwards, he's got a job at the Met Office as a scientific software developer. The Met Office, and I'll mention climate later on, um, produced the weather forecast. And that's an extremely mathematical problem that requires high level mathematics and also supercomputing. Talking about computing, I suppose a lot of us are buying things online at the moment. You're seeing this talk online and you want to make sure that you are protected. And Bruce Schneier here, who works at Harvard Law School, he's a well-known privacy activist. He points out that all of your privacy is based upon mathematics and good mathematics is going to keep your privacy. And Jacqueline Train here works for Ocado. She's one of our graduates. And as she points out, she understands the logic behind the code because of her skills. And it also, her mathematical background helps her solve problems which have a mathematical content. So many problems, you actually need to know some mathematics to work out how to solve them. And with a mathematics degree, you will have a high level understanding of algorithms. So what careers are open? Well, really almost any. Gary Cottle, um, first of all, became an investment banker. He had a very successful career as an investment banker, and he's now a director of a company which generates software platforms for smart buildings. Mark Skipper, after his degree, became a trainee scientist, and he works with the RAF. Jamie Partridge left us to do a PhD at the University of Cambridge on how tall buildings that are buffeted by winds behave. Rebecca Dodge obtained a £25,000 scholarship from the Institute of Mathematics and its applications. That was very prestigious. And Natasha Ridley uh, is an actuarial assistant with Lloyd's Banking Group. Actuaries are people who analyze risk. So if you have an insurance company or a pension scheme, you want to know how, you, how much you are exposed to risk. And for that, you need actuaries. When the COVID virus has been besieged, we're still going to have to worry about climate change. And understanding the climate requires a great deal of mathematics. And Peter Jeremy here, who worked for the Met Office after he left us, he says that his degree gave him an understanding of numerical mathematics, so how to solve problems approximately, and the mathematical programming that you need to model the weather forecast and indeed to model almost anything in industry. And Claire Nazir, some of you might have seen on television, and she also at the moment is producing uh, weather forecasts for the Met Office. So, Mathematics is beautiful. It's amazingly useful, stunningly and surprisingly useful as well. So it helps you to understand the world around you, but it also opens doors to exciting and well-paid careers. 
So by choosing to study mathematics, you are keeping lots of options open for the future. There will be lots of support available during your studies in Plymouth. We make a great deal of use of modern technology. And we have a clear track record from the National Student Survey and the Guardian League table showing that students who choose to study mathematics at the University of Plymouth are very satisfied with their choice. And studying with us can lead to well-paid and extremely interesting jobs. And please, if you have questions, ask us. Talking with us and talking with student ambassadors is a great way of getting more information. And with that, I'll stop this talk.